Uh, Ambassador Bolton, John, uh, once again, it's a pleasure to welcome you to Jerusalem, uh, particularly since your visit comes after the historic decision by President Trump to uh, recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital, to move the embassy here. Uh, as I mentioned last night, we have known each other for many decades, and you've been a consistent champion of our alliance uh, in and out of uh, government. Uh, it's a wonderful alliance, and Israel is, uh, believes that it has no greater friend and ally than the United States. And I believe that the United States has no greater friend and ally than Israel. It's a peculiar kind of ally. We've consistently increased our defense spending. Uh, we insist on defending ourselves by ourselves um, and appreciate all manner of American support. But we believe that the alliance is the alliance of uh, the strong and like-minded. And we share America's values for freedom and liberty. Under uh, President Trump, that alliance has grown uh, stronger than it's ever been. And your visit here gives us an opportunity to make it even stronger and to align our policies even more closely on Iran, on Syria, on Gaza, and on the many challenges that face both our countries in this region. We had a wonderful discussion last night. And today we'll have the opportunity to continue and expand on many fields with uh, you and your delegation. Uh, I know, John, you have a lot on your plate, so let me say how much I appreciate the fact that you're dedicating three days of meetings and discussions uh, to your visit to Israel. That's no small matter. Second, uh, I want to use this opportunity once again to thank President Trump from walking away from the terrible deal with Iran. The nuclear deal did not block Iran's path to the bomb. It paved Iran's path to an entire nuclear arsenal. And by removing the sanctions, it enabled Iran to uh, bring in billions and billions of dollars to its coffers, which only fueled Iran's war machine in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen, and elsewhere. I believe that the President's decision to leave the disastrous Iran's deal was nothing less than a hinge of history. And Israel applauds the Trump administration's determination to reimpose tough sanctions on Iran and those doing business with Iran. I know that that view is shared by all our Arab neighbors, uh, or practically everyone in this region, and I frankly believe that all countries who care about peace and security in the Middle East should follow America's lead and ratchet up the pressure on Iran. Because the greater the pressure on Iran, the greater the chance that the regime will roll back its aggression. And everybody should join this effort. In standing up to the regime, we stand with the people of Iran. The President has made it clear. Secretary Pompeo has made that clear. You have made it clear. And I have made it clear, too, in the numerous appeals, direct appeals to the people of Iran. And it's important that the people of Iran understand that our fight is not with them. Our fight is with the regime that brutally represses them, that arrests women for uncovering their hair, that hangs gays in the public squares, that defies the aspirations for freedom of millions and millions of Iranians. Ambassador Bolton, Israel is uh, also grateful for the Trump administration's unequivocal support for Israel uh, in international forums and on international issues. We hear it every day in the podiums in the White House, in the State Department, at the United Nations. This is deeply, deeply appreciated and deeply valued. We uh, appreciate as well the continuing American commitment to maintaining Israel's qualitative military edge, which enables us to defend ourselves by ourselves against any threat. I look forward to uh, our discussion, um, and I know that this visit will materially enhance uh, the great alliance between our two nations, which uh, serves the greatest interests and the best interests of both our peoples. Welcome to Jerusalem. Thank you. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for that uh, warm welcome. It's a privilege and an honor to be here again uh, in Jerusalem, Israel's capital. 
Uh, and I look Could you say that again? Israel's capital. And I look okay. forward to visiting the American embassy uh, in Jerusalem that uh, President Trump ordered uh, some time back. Uh, I think your analysis of the issues that uh, we have to face is uh, right on spot target. I, it's a question of the highest importance for the United States that Iran never get a deliverable nuclear weapons capability. Uh, it's why President Trump withdrew uh, from the wretched Iran nuclear deal. It's why he is reimposing economic sanctions. Uh, it's why we've worked with our friends in Europe to uh, convince them of the need to take stronger steps against the Iranian uh, nuclear weapons and ballistic missile program. It's why we continue to worry about Iran's role as the central banker of international terrorism. It's why we worry about Iran's belligerent military activity in Iraq, in Syria, with Hezbollah in Lebanon uh, and in Yemen. Uh, all of these threats in the region are also global threats because of the risk of uh, international terrorism and especially terrorist possible use of weapons of mass destruction. Uh, I think the uh, alliance between Israel and the United States and between the people of Israel and the people of the United States has never been stronger. I think President Trump has made that a cornerstone of his foreign policy as you have made it a cornerstone of your uh, policy as Prime Minister. So uh, it's very important, helpful to the United States to have the opportunity uh, to meet with you, to have these extended discussions with you and your uh, senior advisors. Uh, I am really delighted to be back here. It's been a pleasure uh, to know you over the years, to be uh, members of the uh, Union of Former UN Ambassadors, uh, and I look forward to the chance to discuss the whole range of issues that uh, confront Israel and the United States. Thank you. Welcome. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Thank you.